Welcome to RC Tech. This is Ritesh Srinivasan. In this video, let's look at prompt engineering for prompt based learning. Okay, so I have been making videos on prompt based learning. So based on this survey paper and I have explained the basics of prompt learning. I have talked about selection of language models, pre-trained language models for prompt learning. Okay, now let us look at prompt engineering. Just to recap, uh, prompt based learning is a new paradigm where what happens is that if you have an example, okay, for example, like, you know, you have a question, who developed JDK? Now this question is transformed into a prompt. JDK is developed by, there is a slot which needs to be filled in the prompt and then you use a pre-trained language model, for example, BERT to fill that slot. So BERT says that Oracle is the most probable choice over here. So be it a classification problem, be it a summarization, any NLP problem can be mapped into a prompt based learning problem by converting the statements into a prompt where there is a slot where you need a solution from a pre-trained language model. Okay. So now let's go into prompt engineering. Okay. So what is prompt engineering? Prompt engineering is the process of creating a prompting function that results in the most effective performance on the downstream task. Okay. All this means is that you are creating a prompting function which takes as input your text and converts it into a prompt. So the example which I gave previously, who developed JDK is your text. Now what is the prompting function? It says like JDK was developed by, it will convert this text into JDK was developed by dash. So basically you have an input text which is converted into a prompt text. Okay. So we need to consider prompt shape and then decide whether manual or automated approach is required to create the prompts of the desired shape. Okay. Now what are the types of prompts? You have two types of prompts called as close prompts, prefix prompts, both are text. Okay. Let us look at what is close prompts. Okay. So here is an example of uh, close prompts. Okay. So this is for a summarization task, right? So here you have some text. So basically X is a text, Z is a text. And in between you have this TLDR. Okay. So X is, is your input text and you need to do summarization over here. So this is actually a close prompt. Okay. So where your uh, slot is in between your uh, inputs. Okay. What is a prefix uh, prompt? So prefix prompt looks something like this. So you have the text, which is a prefix sentiment uh, for a sentiment classification task. So the text is like, I love this movie. So you create a, the prompting function creates a prefix prompt, which looks like I love this movie. This movie is Z. Now Z is the slot which needs to be filled with say great or fantastic. Okay. Now based on this, whether it's a close prompt or a prefix prompt, you can use Say for the prefix prompt, mostly you can use standard autoregressive language models as explained in my previous uh, video. Whereas for close prompts, it is generally masked language models, which are better. Okay. And depends on the tasks also, like for multiple inputs, if you have text player classification, then it will be like some kind of a close prompt, right? You have two texts uh, and you want to, you know, say whether these two texts are equivalent or, you know, one is the answer for the other question, things like that. Okay. So this is the prompt shape, close prompts or prefix prompts. Okay. Now let us look at uh, how we can engineer these prompts. Okay. So the most natural way is to manually create intuitive templates. Okay. For example, uh, uh, Petroni et al. They manually created closed templates. Okay. Um, so the idea over here is this. So basically, if you have something like, you know, manually defined template for a considered relation. Okay. So for example, S was born in O. So where you have a person was born in O, where that is the place of birth. As example is given below. So Francesco uh, Bartolomeo Conti was born in dash. Okay. Florence is the answer. Okay. So this was manually creation of such templates. Okay. Another manual creation of templates is for say question answering. So if you look over here, say for question answering, uh, so given a passage P, a question Q and an answer candidate A, 
uh, the task is to decide whether A is the correct answer for Q. So there is a passage. Okay, there is a question and there is an answer. Right, so whether the answer for the question is correct, so you can create a template over here is like, you know, question mark, is it A, answer question mark and then yes or no, which needs to be filled. Okay, so this was used in the other uh, paper over here. Uh, so, uh, uh, Shik and uh, you know in this paper it was used for uh, predefined templates in for text classification and conditional text generation task. Okay, so this is manual templates. Okay, now what is the difficulty of manual templates? Uh, see, creating and experimenting with these prompts is an art and it takes time and experience. You need the right kind of uh, you know manual templates, right, for these prompts. Okay, so even experienced prompt designers may fail to manually discover some optimal prompts. Okay, this is why you need automated template learning. Okay, um, so here what happens is that, uh, you know, there are two categories. One is a discrete prompt where the prompt is an actual text string and the other one is a continuous prompt where the prompt is instead described directly in the embedding space of the underlying language model. So your prompts can be discrete, which is text string or it can be continuous prompts. Okay, in the case of continuous prompts, you are using some embeddings instead of text. Okay, so uh, then we have something called as discrete prompts, right? So what is discrete uh, prompts? Uh, so they are text strings, actual text strings, right? So what are the methods to do this? So one is prompt mining. Okay, in this method, uh, what uh, they do is that they scrape a large text corpus for strings containing X and Y and they find either the middle words or dependency paths and then they create a template like this X middle words Z. Okay, an example of this is shown over here. So Barack Obama, Barack Obama was born in Hawaii. So this is converted into a prompt X was born in Y. Now X can be a person, Y can be a place, right? Replacing the subject and object in the placeholder. So now you have generated a prompt. Okay. So the next is prompt paraphrasing. So here the idea is that you take a, you know, existing seed prompt, something like X was born in Y, and then you try to, uh, you know, par uh, create paraphrases to create other candidate prompts, and then select the one which achieves highest training accuracy on the target task. Okay, so the idea over here is this. For example, is Will uh, see is Will and Grace was originally aired on, you know, some TV channel or something, right? If this is your original template, you can change it to uh, Will and Grace is originally aired on Mask, right? So you are paraphrasing it. You are basically having a seed template and then you are creating paraphrases out of it and then try to see which paraphrase, which uh, you know, candidate prompt gives highest accuracy on target task. This is another way of creating discrete prompts. Another way is gradient based search where they applied a gradient based search over actual tokens to find short sequences that can trigger the underlying pre-trained language model to generate the desired target prediction. Okay. This search is done in an iterative fashion, stepping through tokens in the prompt. Okay. What is, happens over here is that you have the sentence. Okay. Then you have a set of tokens. Okay. You select a set of tokens you know, which, uh, uh, you know, kind of directs the language model to give the output. Okay. And this uh, tokens is actually, uh, you know, these tokens and search uh, uh, sequence basically uh, is through gradient search. You are searching through these tokens. So for example, over here, if you have the original text as unflinchingly bleak and desperate, some tokens which can come over there are writing, academics, where overseas will appear. Okay. And then you have the mask. So based on this, it tries to search through and find, you know, which is the, uh, like what needs to be filled. So this is the gradient based search way of, uh, you know, engineering a prompt. Another way is that, uh, you know, the generation of the prompt itself, you can uh, take it as a text generation task. And then you can use standard language models to perform this task. For example, models like uh, T5. Okay. So if you look at this, it is like, uh, you know, what they did was in one of the papers over here, basically this paper, what they did was, uh, you know, uh, uh, they first used the auto mask and then what they did is, uh, you know, it created uh, from that they generated mask like auto prompts like this, which is like uh, for the first one is like, uh, you know, a mask one, uh, you have the sentence and then the, this thing. Uh, so in this way prompts are created, right? So the movie 
was if the sentence is like it was a great movie or the movie was i watched the movie and then you want to predict the sentiment right so it could be a great one it could be a terrible one okay all in all a great movie okay so that's the first case the second case is like uh, you know uh, it was and again then irresistible pathetic again labels right um so yeah so this is about uh, you know creating it as a text generation task okay then you have the prompt scoring okay uh, this is uh, interesting because what they do over here is that uh, they design a template okay based on a, a relation uh, tuple okay they first handcraft a set of templates as potential candidates fill the input and answer slots to form a filled prompt then they use a language model to actually you know select the one with the highest probability okay so for example it is like this see if you have a set of musician capable of playing musical instrument right that, that is kind of relation right so there is a musician uh, what is a musician capable of playing a musical instrument if that is a relation so you can have these kind of prompts right musician can playing musical instrument musician can be play musical instrument musician often play musical instrument right so you you can have these filled uh, you know prompts which are generated and then you can see which kind of scores better so there are scores shown over there 5.7 and and whichever scores better uh, you know you can use that uh, filled prompt as a prompt for your uh, training but when you are taking the filled prompt what you you do is that you will remove the slot and the slot will be replaced by mask okay so this was about discrete prompts okay so the idea of discrete prompts is that your prompt is also a text string okay and how can you automatically generate this text string for a particular problem okay next you have continuous prompts okay so in the continuous prompts is that uh, the advantage is that um, what what happens over here is that uh, you know it is not necessary to limit the prompt to human interpretable natural language you need not have a natural language prompt you can have kind of prompts which are a mix of embeddings and text okay so uh, what this does is that it removes two constraints one is it relaxes the constraint that embeddings of template words be the embeddings of natural language okay english word it could be other embeddings also i'll show something below remove the restriction that the template is param uh, parameterized by the pre trained language uh, uh, language model parameters instead templates can have their own parameters that can be tuned based on the training data from the downstream task okay so that's the idea over here uh um, so the methods over here are uh, prefix tuning so prefix tuning is a method that prepends a sequence of continuous task specific vectors to the input while keeping the language model parameters frozen okay so the idea over here is that if you look at over here is that see uh, what they do is that when initializing from sampled vocabulary in one, uh, in this paper uh in this paper over here when i looked at uh, it what they do is that uh they use the 5000 most common token embeddings okay uh, for you know uh, they put this embeddings as part of your uh, uh, what you call uh, your prompt okay and then they try to train based on that okay so that is the idea over here uh so this is about prefix uh, tuning okay and another interesting thing when i looked it over here is that uh, you know uh, in this particular paper they trained a vision encoder that encodes an image into a sequence of embeddings okay and this image embeddings can be used to prompt a frozen language model to generate the appropriate caption so this is some kind of a multimodal learning so here the idea is that uh, in prefix tuning tuning is that you know prepend the input sequence with special tokens to form a template and tune the embeddings of these tokens directly so that's the idea over here okay then you have tuning initialized with discrete prompts so the idea here is that first you define a template using a discrete search method such as auto prompt so you get a text template okay then you fine tune some embeddings over this text template okay so then you create another template where you are using embeddings of this text and then you try to improve it okay so for example uh, so over here say what is being done is that um, auto prompt is used to generate a you know a template right and for that template you go and replace the words in the template by your uh, embeddings from say bert over here and then you this you you try to tune this okay 
then there is this hard soft hybrid uh, tuning uh, so instead of pu uh, using a purely learnable prompt template these methods insert some tunable embeddings into a hard prompt template okay and then they try to you know uh, something called p tuning where continuous prompts are learned by inserting trainable variables into the embedded input okay uh, in this paper han et al they propose prompt tuning with rules which uses manually created sub templates to compose a complete template using logic rules this is quite interesting i'll just show you an example over here see for example in relation classification if we wonder whether two marked entities in a sentence have the relation say person parent okay so with prior knowledge we will check whether the two marked entities are human in that sentence okay the sentence indicates the parental relationship semantic relationship okay so then what can be done in this case is that you divide your prompting problem into a set of sub templates and then you create for each template you create a function okay these are called conditional functions so one is like first is given a sentence that you know Uh, apple is a, a leading uh, what do you call uh, manufacturer of smartphones apple is located in california or something okay then you create a first sentence where apple needs to be a organization right uh, and you create a function which says that apple is an organization which verifies that in the second one you create a function that apple is located at so basically location of the organization and then you have a combination function over here like an and function okay which you can write as a rule so you can divide your problem into sub templates and each of these templates then can be com uh, combined using logic rules and then you can kind of tune and you can get a template out of it okay so that is the idea over here in hard soft hybrid tuning okay so these are the methods for your prompt engineering so prompt engineering in summary is trying to create these prompts okay uh, is a process of creating your prompting function which takes as an input text and tries to create a prompt okay so uh, this is what has been shown over here in this figure let me go to the figure okay so it talks about prompt engineering based on shape you can have this close or prefix you know and these are some methods for that and then you can have human effort handcrafted it could be automated it could be discrete or continuous okay so you can have handcrafted over here also right so, so i hope you find this uh, video on prompt engineering useful i'll be continuing with this uh, paper in the next set of uh, videos where i'll try to talk about answer engineering and then talk about multi prompt learning and prompt based training strategies If you like the video please like share subscribe to the channel see you in another video happy learning